Looks like blunt force upside the head. With this. Found it near the entrance. Blood on the tip over here. What's their story? Oh, grapes of wrath. Co-op garden. Gates always open. Nobody saw or heard anything. You're amazing. What's with his hands? All scraped up. Wingtip scratched on the uppers. Well, he probably landed on the pavement and got dragged in here sometime last night. Nice selection of 10s and 20s. Probably not a mugging. Martin Felder, 13 East 82nd Street. New York Bar Association. The guy's a lawyer. Hmm. I'll be in mourning for the next five minutes. Might not be luck. This Dupre is a piece of work. When the verdict came down, he attacked his attorney in the courtroom. Then he got a new lawyer who quit after Dupre threatened him. He doesn't handle bad news very well. Well, if his appeal wasn't going his way, getting rid of Felder could stall the needle a few more years. He put out a hit? What do you mean he's dead? He was murdered in the city three days ago. No. This can't be happening to me. It's not. It happened to Felder. No, I mean, Felder said he was getting new evidence. He said he had a shot at getting me out of here. What new evidence? I don't know. Just check his files. The police didn't find any files pertaining to you. Oh, man. What am I going to do? You're going to get yourself another lawyer, another stay. Another year or two will go by, which was the whole point of having Felder killed. What are you talking about? You have a bad track record with lawyers who don't tell you what you want to hear. No way. Felder knew I'm innocent. He's... He said he was on a mission to save my life. Why would I want him dead? Do we know about the uh, phone calls that Felder got? No, we don't. Last week, Felder got a call on his cell phone threatening him if he didn't back off the appeal. You check into it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the lunch from the phone company with no joy. Call came from a payphone, Midtown. Thanks. Hey. No. You don't remember victim's assistance calling you to tell you that Felder filed a new appeal for the son of a bitch who killed your wife? You don't remember calling Felder from a phone booth around the corner from your office? You've been waiting four years to see this dirt bag put down. We can imagine how that feels. No, you can't. Somebody you love gets killed. The only way you can stay sane is to think about what's going to happen to the bastard who did it. Anybody who gets in the way, like some smart lawyer. All right. All right, I called him. I was angry. That animal, Dupre, killed my wife. I passed him on the street. He was coming from our home. He killed my Dana. Four years. I've waited. Mr. Hagen, what you did to Felder, I we can... I didn't do anything to that man. I called him. That's all I did. What were you doing Monday night? I was in my office with two of my colleagues talking to my supplier in Manila. We're going to check on that. To pray, I would kill that man with my bare hands. But Felder, please, what would be the point? Nice set of lockpicks, Mike, honed by years of use. And this little pry bar, this is nice. I've been looking for one just like it. Where'd you buy it? I'm going to wait on my lawyer. What's he going to tell you you don't already know? This is a parole violation. You going back upstate to finish your stretch? And that's just for openers. We're putting together a murder case against you, maybe two. You recognize these people? You should. You killed him to cover up the fact that you killed her. I didn't kill anybody. This is from the burglary at the lady's house. Dana Hagen, if you don't remember. The twist of the alarm wires, three turns bent down on the side. That's your signature, Mike. The same with all your other burglaries. I know four guys do it the same way. And I said, I'm going to wait on my lawyer. Jamie called me back. Her guy won't deal. You talk to Eric Hagen? Yeah, he won't budge from his original ID. It's Dupre all the way. Better safe than sorry. What's all this? I pulled the complete Hagen file out of storage. It was worth the allergy attack. Memo from the Bronx Stolen Property Recovery Unit, Detective Wesley Simpson. Please advise regarding disposition of one white platinum bracelet engraved love forever. List of property stolen from the Hagen home, line 12. 
one platinum bracelet, inscription love forever. Where was the bracelet found? During a vice squad sweep of Hunts Point four years ago. It's been sitting in the Bronx in a property room ever since. Anybody find out how it ended up in Hunts Point? No indications Detective Simpson or anyone else followed up on that memo. Andy, we're not alleging any malfeasance here. I should hope not. This was a high profile case, death penalty, long hours. You were invested in getting Dupre convicted. My God, Jack, the guy was arrested in a bar three blocks from the scene. He was ready to confess. There was no mistake here, no dereliction. Whatever happened, now's the time to undo it. There's nothing to undo. Forget that an innocent man might be sitting on death row. Michael Gordon could get away with two murders. We need you to confirm the prostitute story and to confirm you had the tip about Max Bronstein. These allegations are crap. Dana Hagen was killed by Stephen Dupre, period. Now get out. You mind coming with us? What, what for? You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Stephen Dupre. What is this, a joke? No, Your Honor, we'll have to ask you to remove the robe. Call Helen Brolin. Her number's in my Rolodex. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you do say can and will be used against you. I worked on the Hagen case for nearly 18 months. I spoke with dozens of witnesses, read over 100 police reports, and received I don't know how many phone calls. But I don't remember getting any calls like the ones Miss Ross described. Did you receive any tips at all? Not personally, no. But the police did. Cases like these always generate a lot of tips, most of them false. If there had been any that led anywhere, I'm sure the police would have told me. Now, Judge, as you sit here today under oath, are you still convinced you put the right man on death row for the murder of Dana Hagen? Yes. Without a doubt, absolutely. Thank you. So I guess you don't make mistakes. Not in this case, no. What about the bracelet that sat on a shelf in the Bronx for four years? I was unaware of that until you brought it to my attention. If you weren't aware, whose fault is that? The police? I suppose so. If that lead wasn't followed, Again, that's the fault of the police? If it was a legitimate lead, yes. It's up to them to investigate it. But my guess is Mr. Dupre disposed of the bracelet before he was arrested. But since the investigating detectives didn't do their job, we'll never know. It's moot. Dupre was identified by the victim's husband. As a former prosecutor, you're aware of the studies documenting the unreliability of eyewitnesses? Yes. Mr. Hagen got a quick glimpse of the suspect on a dark street. He might have been mistaken, yes? It's possible. But you're forgetting the fact that Mr. Dupre offered to confess. On the advice of his attorney and only if you took the death penalty off the table. Yes. If it turns out that he is innocent, his lawyer gave him bad advice. I'd say so. In the unlikely event he's innocent. If he is, his conviction is the result of terrible mistakes by the police, by Mr. Hagen, by Dupre's attorney, by Dupre himself, by everyone except you, because you don't make mistakes. Isn't that what you're saying? No, 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 no. If the evidence had been there, I would have looked into it. You were afraid to. You were about to deliver your summation. Dupre had to be your guy. That's not true. Three days after Dupre was sentenced to death, didn't you ask Adam Schiff to put your name up for a judgeship? Yes or no? Yes. Dupre's conviction was your ticket to the bench. No. Isn't that why you turned down his offer of a confession? No. Isn't that why you ignored Miss Ross's phone calls? No, I did. Because it wasn't a mistake? You placed your ambition above a man's life. I know down to my bones that Stephen Dupre is guilty. You'll never convince me otherwise. We start second-guessing ourselves. Pretty soon the public starts second-guessing the process. And society won't tolerate that. It needs the certainty of justice. Your Honor. You look at the facts, you decide on a course of action, and then you stick to it. That is how I work, Mr. McCoy. That is how we all work. In the heat of a trial, details can be overlooked. We all wish the administration of justice could have been more diligent, however. I see no evidence 
of a crucial element of a crime of attempted murder. I see no evidence of intent. If Judge Walensky committed any wrong, it was a crime of arrogance, not design. Therefore, I find insufficient evidence to allow this matter to proceed. The charge is dismissed.